Welcome to Rid on the Reef for a perspective that is sometimes different but always analytical. It's a simple question, has coral cover, the amount of coral on the reef, increased or decreased, especially over the last decade? In previous episodes, I've used this graph here, which is the coral cover, basically the amount of coral on the Great Barrier Reef, to show that actually the amount of coral at the moment is uh, very good, and that it's risen from its lows about a decade ago. But this is actually quite, quite controversial. Um, one of the fact checkers from one of the major tech companies actually claims that in the last decade, the amount of coral on the reef has declined. So in July this year, the big tech fact checkers said that despite 2021 being a good year for coral health, coral in the Great Barrier Reef has declined over the past decade and is threatened by climate change, contrary to the claims by Peter Ridd. And they said that my claims that the reef is doing pretty well at the moment and high coral is inaccurate. Now monitoring of the coral is done by the Australian Institute of Marine Science been going on since the mid 80s and essentially they tow a diver behind a slow moving boat and they record essentially an estimation of the coral cover roughly every 150 meters or so. We can see some of the sites that Ames monitors and uh, we can zoom in say on this reef here and you can see that the transects go generally speaking right around a coral reef and they categorise it, so the red bits is very low coral cover, less than 10%, the green bits is more than 75%. Now it should be pointed out that each of these segments of the transect around the reef, an estimation is done, and some people regard that as a bit of a weakness, and it is in, in a sense, but provided the divers are well trained, they can generally agree pretty well within you know, 10% or so on how much coral is on the ground, on the, the seabed. It's a bit like the ability of people to estimate other people's height just by looking at them, provided they've been reasonably trained. Although we call them coral reefs, in fact there's lots of other organisms that live on the reef, and so you don't expect 100% coral cover. You have regions of crustose coralline algae, you have regions of sand, uh, you've got regions where the coral has been killed uh, by Cranathorn starfish, mostly cyclones, and also bleaching events, and that area will be covered with algae. And each year the results go up on the web, and they publish the data for the northern third, the central third, and the southern third of the Great Barrier Reef. And not only do they look at hard coral cover, but they also look at the Cranathorn starfish numbers, because that was actually what precipitated these surveys in the first place. We're going to look at each of these three regions and see what the coral cover has done, especially over the last decade, where the fact checkers said that there's been a decline. So for the northern zone, you can see that we certainly lost a lot of coral uh, by about 2016 from the various things, cranathorn starfish, bleaching and cyclones, but we've got more or less the same amount of coral now as we did a decade ago, especially when you consider the uncertainty estimate, which is the light blue region. For the central region, if you go back 10 years, when it was the coral cover was very, very low, you can see that we've actually uh, significantly increased. In fact, it's more or less double the amount of coral on the central zone than it was a decade ago. The southern zone has probably had the most spectacular changes. So if we go back to 2010-11, we were barely over 10%, and now we're you know in the mid-30s. So it's up by about 250% uh, in the last 10 years. In summary, the northern zone has more or less the same amount of coral. The central zone has now got double the amount of coral. And the southern zone has got two to three times the amount of coral than it did a decade ago. So it's a little bit difficult to see how the fact checkers make the claim that the Great Barrier Reef coral has declined in the past decade. The big tech fact checkers also claim that I misrepresented the source data. So it says Peter Ridd misuses data from the Australian Institute of Marine Science in a graph showing how coral cover of the Great Barrier Reef has changed over time. 
Although the data show an improvement in the amount of coral covering the reef in 2021 compared with previous years, coral cover is not at a record high since 1985 for any region of the Great Barrier Reef. Now my comments apply to the aggregate coral cover for the whole Great Barrier Reef, whereas the fact checkers are talking about the individual uh, coral cover for the three regions. Though in fact at all three regions, uh, once you take into account the uncertainty bar, there's been no period for any of them where the coral cover has been higher. Now because the, rec the coral can um, fluctuate dramatically from one year to the other, what you can have a situation where if all three regions are together at very high coral cover, then you end up with extremely high aggregate coral cover. If only one of the regions is very low, you will end up with much lower coral cover. So the reason we have such good coral cover this year is because coincidentally all three regions have got very high coral cover. One of the reasons that this dispute has come about is that AIMS no longer give a reef aggregate of coral cover. If you go back to 2016-17, they actually up until that date did give an aggregate whole Great, Great Barrier Reef coral cover. So this was the coral cover up to 2016. You may remember that in these surveys they don't just look for coral cover, they also look for crown of thorns starfish numbers. And it's interesting to note that they aggregate the numbers for the entire Great Barrier Reef for crown of thorns starfish. So these pictures here go right back to the beginning of the series, right up to 2021. And what we really need is for AIMS to do the same as they used to do up until 2016 for the coral as well as the crown of thorn starfish. But in the end the world wants to know how much coral is out there on the Great Barrier Reef. So what to do that because AIMS no longer do this we need to use the data that's there to produce the aggregate. So the northern zone has 27% coral cover, 54 reefs, similar numbers for the central and southern regions. If you weight the coral cover according to the number of reefs sampled you get an aggregate reef wide coral cover of 28% and if you weight it by the region you get about 31% and that can now be plotted on the previous graphs which they gave up to 2016-17. Plotting the lowest of those which is the 28% on the graph and you get an extremely high number. Now remember there's a large uncertainty estimate in all of these but nevertheless the coral cover at the moment is as high as it's ever been in the past. Not just for the aggregate of the Great Barrier Reef but also for every single region. Now you could validly quibble about the method that I have used for aggregation and it may not be exactly the same as whatever AIMS might have used in the past. But nevertheless, it doesn't matter which way you aggregate the data, the reef at the moment has extremely high coral cover. It's an extremely good news story and it really is surprising that the big tech fact checkers seem to want to take a story which is undoubtedly excellent news and turn it into bad news. But many reef organisations have poured cold water on this beautiful recovery of the Great Barrier Reef. They claim that in fact it's only the fast growing corals that have recovered uh, like these Acropora corals. And they ignore the fact that well of course it's the fast growing corals that have recovered. These are the ones that are smashed by cyclones, they're eaten by crown of thorn starfish and they're the ones most susceptible to bleaching. So did in 2012 when the coral cover had hit really rock bottom, did they say in the media releases oh it's just the fast growing coral and that they'll recover, not at all. This very famous paper came out in 2012 from Ames and its conclusion was that coral cover on the Great Barrier Reef is consistently declining and without intervention it will likely fall to 5 to 10 percent within the next 10 years. Well 10 years later it's roughly double what it was then and this is entirely due to the fast growing corals which are the first to, to uh, be killed, uh, recovering extremely strongly. This is an in indication of a very robust ecosystem. In any case, I certainly welcome this fact check and the debate that it encourages. But in my view, no matter which way you look at the data,
the situation of the Great Barrier Reef actually looks extremely encouraging.